What's going on everybody? Chris here, looking at the S&P 500. And I think I'm actually going to change the model. The model was to have the analysis to where uh, the dominant factor is these um, math cycles of the S&P 500. And, you know, I've had, I would have like four of them, like the decennial, the annual, the four year. And uh, this is come on up on another kind of um, inflection point and the uh, four year one annual and the decennial and also I guess you could call it the decimal too um, I don't really think the decimal really holds I, they don't they took away the decimal Yeah, they took they took away the decimal. But anyways, let's get rid of this last one. Yeah, there we go. So four year annual and decennial, they they're all kind of inflecting uh, around this coming uh, Monday. So, uh, but what's weird is like it's it's been. It hasn't been like really helpful uh, in this last uh, last peak. Like I was thinking something was going to happen here, uh, and it, it did. It it just lagged. It lagged um, a, a lot of days past it. So I I was like, okay. So it seems like the lag is just a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And because of that, I'm, I'm taking that away from here, and I'm, I'm putting that something more. Uh, I'm like swapping it out. I'm putting the cycles as something as like a a fundamental, just something to be considered. And then uh, we got the we could throw in cycles and seasonals. <clears throat> um, let's see if I can get it all the way to the end. Um, so I don't know, like uh, season, it things being seasonal and cycles. Like with it, with seasonals, I I just kind of use that as something to maybe increase my risk, but not necessarily like count as something that would possibly influence the trade. Like the cycles, I think, have more of a math uh, pull on it that have a greater influence. And uh, just watching the curves does a good enough job. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things. Uh, so it looks like I need to figure out a way to see the, the balance sheet. And I think I have it on the noise one. We might as well open up a whole bunch of these. Because uh, proprietary trend, and then I don't think it's uh, time to open up growth versus value and lumber versus gold. I think it's unchanged, and then uh, market versus the gold. I think it's like in contention right now, and uh, rotation. Um, I don't think we need to look at that. But uh, the noise is the one that's supposed to have uh, the balance sheet, so it, it doesn't. It's here on this proprietary trend. So it looks like the balance sheet is uh, unchanged, uh, just a taper of the purchases and uh, the raising of the rates. And um, so that fulfills uh, showing you just the central bank balance sheet it's it, they say they claim that uh, they're going to start offloading their balance sheet and you know we're just going to treat it like uh, kind of an untrustworthy teenager you know we'll believe it when we see it kind of deal and uh, government stimulus um, 
from watching Clear Value Tax and his YouTube channel, I don't think I heard of any stimulus coming down the pipeline. It just seems like there's a gridlock uh, with uh, mansion and cinema, with anything. When when it, it's, it sounds like they will, mansion wants to try to increase the taxes and pay down the debt, and then cinema doesn't want to increase the taxes but she agrees to she we need to pay down the debt but probably a different way uh, but as far as like stimulus for for uh, gasoline um, to help aid the people with uh, the price high prices i don't think that's uh, gonna happen black swan events um possibly maybe over this weekend I mean, we got like some pot stirring that's happening with China um, practicing, I don't know, like military things around like Taiwan. <clears throat> and then we got Russia <clears throat> practicing uh, a new like a, a submarine missile launch in the Sea of Japan. With uh, U.S. and J Japanese uh, forces there, and just being right there, so I just, in this this war it seems like it's going to be a lot more drawn out. Like um, first it was called like a special operation. Now, like the media, Russian media won't, is um, trying to call it a war now, and when they change the the wording. They're able to activate more forces, uh, more, um, I guess, personnel in in the cause. Like, uh, I think maybe, I don't know, we'll see if it's like more advanced fighters. But, uh, and then other Black Swan events could be like the, people are talking about maybe a possible housing market bubble burst. Uh, with the the rising rates, and uh, if you think of the defensive sectors that are doing well, you know, it goes to like energy, uh, gold or materials, uh, uh, utilities, and real estate. And uh, real estate is, I think, um, Lacey Hunt, they or maybe like um, other people, they, they really watch uh, real estate. Um, as uh, in mortgages is something to be closely watched for uh, fragility in the market and uh, we'll see I mean with energy I that quarterly close of energy just kind of uh, made me not really interested in it um, let me see if I can find a chart that's this this got the quarterly uh, we need to go to, I think you need tickers uh, to get a quarterly chart. Uh, so we got a quarterly and a weekly. And then we go to just WTI oil, West Texas oil. We're in the quarterly. And if you could see here, this um, the quarterly candle closed below that line. Let's see if we can also get um, the uh, horizontal lines. Let's see, where is where are my horizontal lines? So we want none of these have it. Uh, let's try this one. So this one's got two. So we want this one. Oh, this one, the proprietary trend. It's got it's got it right here. So I got my Fibonacci fake out zone here, and that's just something to where I just saw from this point to this point a support and then it forecasted um, deviations like second de deviation third deviation and it really marks like really good fake out zones and strong support and resistance and it, as you can see here in the past quarters this has been um, sold into heavy like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars of just selling, uh, just like killing that. And I think because this bar didn't close above here, that's kind of just general 
generally how uh, we can tell when a market structure break has happened is on the close of the quarter and it didn't close above and we reset. Now we're two months and 15 days. It could go all the way up here and retreat. I'm just thinking in the near term that it's too uncertain and that uh, going long now, I, I don't I, I don't know. It, I mean, if you're trading it and you're tra trading with a small size uh, leverage, that yeah, that makes sense. It's, it, it might work out, but it looks risky to me. Like if we had the quarterly close here, we came down to retest it. So if we closed the quarter above here. That would be more bullish to me. Since we closed the quarter below, it looks more bearish and it looks like it's more likely to break down. If we take a look at uh, the the order box, we'll take a look. Um, probably have to minimize it but um yeah like I, i'm not really they don't have any strong conviction in oil right now but um i think out of like the the trending sectors like oil real estate utilities materials and um you know healthcare i think is doing okay um that uh if you took out energy and real estate uh, that would be it. I think the rest of the market will be down. And um, but uh, let's go ahead and just follow our uh, our system. So black, we went through the black swan events, possible black swan events. So we're just going to keep an eye out for them. So the we're going to go over the credit spreads. So credit spread alerts. The credit spread stress has increased. From like 1.6 to like 1.7 to like 2.1. Uh, so uh, April 8th all the way up to April 11th to 14th, it's the stress has gone up moderately, and uh, so we're just going to continue to monitor that. One thing that's really interesting is junk bonds compared to um, long-term treasuries. Uh, we'll go on this one. And we'll go on junk versus TLT. So it's breaking out. Uh, so that's like really interesting. Um, you would think, let's see. Yeah, it, it broke out there. I want to see unique tickers. Does this have like the lines? So this has got the weekly. It looks like we're going to come into resistance very soon. If we take uh, the weekly range, we're probably in the fake out zone very soon. So you can see the fake out zones right here. So on the weekly. So it looks like a good rule of thumb that uh, if this were to turn around, that uh, we'll see a flight to safety. And uh, there's this gap here that it might want to fill. It could uh, just turn around once it hits that green line. You know, we don't know. But we do know like the fake out level is like right here. Uh, if we were to use anything around here, like a different kind of range, like the quarterly, let's take a look. It looks like uh, if we were to kind of see it by, side by side. Yeah, the fake out zone and this 0.764 line are kind of in the same area. And if we were to see this is like where resistance is on the, on the quarter on this um if you were to take the top um top white bar um uh, close i think that's where this that's to the close that's where resistance would be so uh we'll see like uh, this is um something i don't normally track junk versus tlt but it does uh kind of like spark some interest of a possible like risk on period where uh, junk bonds are appealing. Um, as you could see in 2020, uh, long term treasuries were more appealing, but um, it's suggesting uh, the pump and junk bonds that uh, it's appealing to take on risk um, for high yield uh, junk bonds. But I don't, we don't know what you know what who's buying it so um 
let's go ahead and move on let's see what's next so we looked at the credit spreads looks let's look at uh, the move index how did it close on the week that's something I'm really interested in uh, just to see how that one closed on the week <clears throat> So what what is the one? This is unique tickers. Maybe it's the noise one we look at. Uh, what's the one that's got all the lines? That oh, you know what? Is it, maybe it is unique tickers. Uh, let's see. It is unique tickers. It's just added a whole bunch of new. Uh, a new channel so it looks like maybe <clears throat> we closed under that yellow line uh, we could be consolidating more it looks like um, it's just uh, making some kind of symmetrical uh, consolidating pattern like a symmetrical triangle and uh, if it closed under here it looks like we're going to consolidate even more right here until there's a, a breakout so it sounds it looks like this is also saying on the move index that a risk-off period we didn't hit a risk-off period going into the weekend but it could flip <coughs> it could flip um, you know you don't know but it's it's leaning more risk on that's what it's telling me I mean this from what I see the close is under that yellow line and that's more of a, a bearish sign on the move index and bear, anything bearish on the move index means more risk on uh, but the the credit spreads um, I don't know it, it's that's telling me like proceed with caution that um, things are fragile and as far as like the the yield curve if we go uh, we, we were to duplicate this and look at the yield curve on stock charts Let's see. You know, like this near term looks very like healthy and manipulated. <laughs> that uh, the market looks good from the three month to the the five year. Um, just the uh, the the one the Fed can't control is inverted. Seven and ten, twenty and thirty. Um, so, but we already got an inversion of the, the two to two, the two to 10. So majority of it has already inverted. It's just a matter of time. So I think, uh, yeah, we got like anywhere from six months to two years from now, uh, some kind of, uh, big risk off event. But from what this is saying in the near term, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of like risk off. So, uh, you know, it's something we'll continue to monitor. But um, with that in mind, it sounds like if I were to summarize the bond market or just like, um, you know, the, the money behind the scenes <clears throat> with uh, the yield curve, um, it sounds like in the near term, there's nothing to be like really worried about other than uh, some volatility. Um and then we got credit spreads. It's saying, you know, be on alert. Uh, other than that, I don't know what else it would, you know, it's saying other than, yeah, be on alert. Like, hey, things are fragile. Move index is saying like, hey, like uh, we're elevated for a possible risk off event. Um, but with it happening relatively within Monday or Tuesday we don't know that's kind of just what I hear what I see in that lumber to gold we're not going to look at that uh, I don't think there was a huge tanking in lumber to gold but we can look at it we can just take a quick look see if there's any change I mean I don't really see a big change it's looking like lumber weakness versus gold has um, progressed um, and once we start get, seeing it under the blue line, we'll start to take note more of uh, what it can do. But it does look like um, 
maybe gold got stronger. Let's take a look at the market versus gold. I'm kind of curious. So it does look like on the faster time frame that uh, gold is starting to win. Uh, we need to see the close on the quarter in the six month. Uh, but it does look like gold is powering up in some way and it's gaining strength. We'll find out in like two months uh, whether that it will hold true more. Um, right now it's still choppy. We want to see the pattern fill out to see if there's any like def definition to who's winning. So it's just too early. So we, uh, we completed all that. So we've kind of defined kind of what the the, the credit market is thinking in some way. And then uh, we'll look at the dollar. So the dollar, we'll look at it with the noise um, kind of lens. So uh, on this is one month and one day. So we have broken out. Um, I don't have my like fake out lines. Let's go on proprietary trend and look at the dollar. So there's my fake out lines. We'll look at the bigger time frame. And uh, it looks like it's broken out. Um, so it's this indicator has created a new line. It was here. And I like that one better. But it, it looks like it's broken out of multiple like places. Uh, if we get a close on the quarter above here, it'll definitely be trying to make some kind of bull flag. Um, that's, that's what it looks like. So it looks like it's going to continue higher. Probably close the quarter here. A huge flagpole. Make a bull flag. And then maybe launch uh, down the road. Who knows? But um, this is what they call a bulldog. Um, according to a Oasis. Let's take out the magnet of the bulldog. There's the tail. There's the body. And then it's making the head. And that's kind of how it would look. Um, this is the back of the the dog and these are the feet and it's a double bottom bull flag that's kind of just how that plays out I only pay attention to two patterns one's a swing failure pattern uh, and then another one is that bulldog uh, because it's two patterns in one it's a um, double bottom bull flag <coughs> But it would be bearish if uh, the quarter closed below this level, uh, in the dollar ninety nine spot forty five, uh, because like it would want to go down. It would, um, but um, right now it's up, and uh, if it continues, I see it coming into this uh, this wick high, and then um, getting faked out in some way. But um, basically. It looks like there's more room for it to run. Um, and we're going to just continue to monitor it. It's, it's It's been just going straight up and it retested. It looks like the weekly. But um, it, it just looks like it's just on a tear. Um, so that's that. Uh, the dollar strong, which usually makes the market weaker. Uh, so we'll see come uh, Easter Sunday when the market opens how the dollar trades overnight uh, to see how that affects come Monday and market open. Uh, we saw lumber to gold, we saw the dollar, um, and then the cycles. So if we look at the cycles for the S&P 500. So this is saying that uh, there's we're gonna we're heading towards uh, a concave like uh, curve on all three. So we're expecting some turn to the downside. Um, so then what I see possibly playing out. Um, so if we turn to just the the other part of the puzzle. Uh, which is the money flow index. So like right here, 
I've swapped out the cycles with the Williams Money Flow Index. Um, I don't know. I, I give this weekly um, MACD like a lot of weight and just the damage it can do. And it doesn't, it looks like it's really close to crossing. And what I can see possibly playing out um, because it looks like we have some strong resistance here that uh, we come down to a point of origin retest where we come to somewhere whoops it's not locking in somewhere right there like I it's either we go somewhere right there and my second target would be the lows uh, right there uh, Let's see. Yeah, so around um, 41, 20, yeah, so we're, it first targets here, and then uh, second targets this low. Um, technically, I guess it, it would be, no, yeah, like, it, I think it would be that, it would be that low, it would wick down get grab all the liquidity of all those um bulls that uh that uh, got in here because they all have their stops like probably here or break even so if it purges through it i mean that's kind of where my um where my naked pivot is for just a market imbalance so if we were go to here uh, we want to Pull up the mini naked pivots. So these help me identify market imbalances, especially the H4. We go to the ES, and this this thing hasn't been tapped. Uh, I don't count this part, but it got close here, but it didn't really tap it. And uh, here. Here's another one that it's drawing itself to. Like it's it's looking like it wants to squeeze squeeze it out. So like I'm I'm looking for it to come all the way down here um, as a return of point of origin. And I think after it tests that, I'm cool with it reversing and then um, picking up. I don't know like. Um, like any of these concaves I'm associating with that pivot, that naked pivot at the lows down here, I'm associating that the concave will be enough, especially with that weekly MACD with the 31016 setting. It's a lot of momentum to cross to the downside with that level and with the amount of liquidity that's down at those lows. Um, that it's gonna want to purge out like that. It's it's a market imbalance, and so like the the I, the methodology is that uh, in order for the market to go higher, it's got to test to see uh, if there's anyone that has weak hands, like traders on leverage, that uh, that that's gonna sell if it were to go to that level. And what usually happens is institutions start buying uh, when it gets to that level and lo and behold if we look at something that allows us to see institutional money we're seeing here on the daily that the institutions are beginning to buy like they're starting to have a positive bullish bias but i i'm thinking that it's going to become really like they're going to be really bullish once we come down into here uh, into the return of point of origin uh, especially with this candle here let me see if I can put a box on it. It's a weird kind of box. Oh, that's not a box. <laughs> Where is my box? I'll get rid of that. Where is this box? Oh, 
Oh no, this is not where I go. There we go. Yeah, so I'm I'm guessing, or I mean that's kind of just where uh, liquidity wants to go to the return of point of origin. This is like the candle that was the down move before the up move, and uh, that's where the uh, the order block is, and it's going to want to test it. And uh, I'm thinking it's going to go to that pivot at the bottom and the lows. It's going to purge that order block. And uh, I think the institutions will step in and buy the dip in some way. Uh, because it would be some sort of a double bottom. I think it's going to try and form a double bottom here. And then uh, we're going to see just what it does from there. If that's just another lower high. Um, but my guess is that um, we're going to see some test of the lows. We're, first off, we're, we're in a return of point of origin. And uh, the way I established that was that we came under this uh, weekly uh, moving average channel on the, the week. Once we close the week below here, I was thinking, okay, this is resistance. Uh, we got down, and I was thinking uh, on that close of that week that it's going to be a return to origin play, uh, especially with this uh, ATR trailing uh, stop kind of looking thing, and that uh, we were going to come into demand, the de weekly demand, which is right here. If I were to draw a line, this is where weekly demand starts. It's going to return a point of origin of that that down candle, and um, if we drew, if you see where I drew that line, the blue line of that moving average channel, ten period low, of the weekly is like right there, and also the ATR trailing stop um, or the Will Williams will trend to sixty six on the weekly, but um, I think it's has a high chance of uh, punching through all the way to that untouched pivot. Um, and then the institutions will be buying. And when we hit those market imbalances, wherever they are, uh, that it will flip the bias to more bullish um, whenever that market structure breaks on the H4 to the upside. I'll definitely be there, but... Uh, Right now, I'm positioned more bearish. Uh, yes, that uh, this has been facing on the bullish side on the daily, but uh, as far as the trend, the momentum on the weekly MACD 310.16, and just uh, the naked pivots and just the return of origin kind of play, it's just telling me like get ready to return to the point of origin or touch that naked pivot, so then um, it could wash out the weak hands, get a lot of buying power to propel us to the, the next level. Maybe we test the high or we test, um, I guess, this mid-range again. But um, the, the edge of trend trading systems, I think, is gone. And we're, we're just range-bound, 52-week um, range. I mean, that's kind of just how I'm looking at it right now. The 52-week range, the yearly range of uh, just bouncing around, uh, range-bound trading um, on the S&P 500. And that's kind of just how I'm seeing it. And uh, as far as like uh, the accumulation index, there's no like um, bullish divergence. So even though this Williams Money Flow Index is uh, bullish biased, uh, it has to be paired up with also... Uh, the accumulation of that, I think they're they're slowly starting to average down, average in down. So as it's going down, they're buying, but uh, they haven't like accumulated a whole lot to where um, there's a divergence of the accumulation, uh, which is this green line. So whenever this starts to um, look like it's going higher and this and the trend is down. Uh, usually I just look at the moving average channel if it's facing down and then the the lows if I connect them on the green line are moving up 
then I can tell that the insiders or the institutions are accumulating a position. And uh, right now, like we can see the screen line. It's in the same direction of the channel. And I don't see that happening like immediately. So until we start to see market structure breaks like an H4 to the upside, I'm positioned to uh, take advantage of the market going down and to the uh, return of point of origin uh, and uh, the momentum carrying on that weekly MACD cross. And I think that's about it. If we were to go look into maybe other momentum indicators like this uh, from Oasis Trading Suite, uh, the MOMO, uh, DBT MOMO. Uh, this is the H12 and H4. It looks like they're about to pinch to the downside. So that just means there's like a lot of pressure pushing down to the downside. If we were to look at a higher time frame to see if there's like any squeeze, uh, the weekly, uh, if it were to push down hard enough, could uh, we could see a big squeeze to the downside, which makes me think we can test the lows. Uh, if we look at the daily, it looks like the trend is breaking 10, which just means like that the trend is breaking. It's no longer an uptrend. Um, but we, I did see um, bullish divergence here on the H4 and H12. I tried to give it a try. I tried to, uh, when it reclaimed here, see if it could go bullish. And maybe uh, I was in at break even at some profit, maybe $500. And I was thinking about taking profit, but I chose not to. And then I got stopped out, you know, break even, no loss. But uh, now there's more confidence that it, we have continued downside. Uh, not that that's what's going to happen. It's just my confidence level is higher to the downside uh, for what's happening. You know, the fragility in the market, yes, like there doesn't seem like to be anything wrong. Just the usual volatility. And right now the volatility looks like it can reach the lows. It can reach the lows. It doesn't look like it's going to just crash the market. But it does look like it, it could at least, with the momentum that's building, could at least touch the lows. And that's kind of how I'm trading it. I'm trading it uh, where I have two targets. One would be this level, the demand. And that's where I'm going to take two-thirds of my profit. And then I'm going to take the other one-third. I'm going to push it short all the way to that naked pivot. And uh, we're going to take profit. Uh, both uh, both of those places maybe I'll open some more positions along the way uh, but uh, we're just gonna see just how much of a benefit we can get by with uh, this coming week close the week with maybe a five to seven percent up on the week um, I think it bounced around uh, it was seven and it went to five so I think, yeah, around 5% of the week, I think that's kind of how much we had. Um, and then um, I think that's kind of just my strategy going in, biased short uh, until the Williams Accumulation Index changes. It looks like um, with paired with the, um, the cycles of um, on the coming Monday, you know, fa concave facing down, Fragility in the credit st uh, stress, um, no real big uh, recession uh, or like emergency uh, signals, but still credit stress and uh, widening uh, spreads and the dollar uh, increasing. It you know it does make sense that um, it's heading more towards a risk off kind of period. Um, we still have to wait a little more for a new COT report for the um, you know currencies, currency pairs. We're going to see that a little bit later. But um, as far as like moving averages uh, and the trend, we go to um, go to range, and then we look at here. Um, on the S P five hundred, oh, this is Bitcoin. S P five hundred. It does look like we're under the two hundred, under the twenty four, under the seventy two. So we're under most of like the major moving averages, and 
Uh, one thing that's interesting is the 24 is crossing over the 72. So I don't know if that means that uh, uh, it's going to swing back or if, um, if that doesn't mean a whole lot and that the momentum is going to carry uh, because of the close below the 200. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to monitor it, but it does look like it's underneath all uh, most of the significant moving averages. Uh, I think it's also below the 50. I mean, if we, let's go ahead and kind of alter the 24, put it to 50, and see what happens. So it's under the 50, too. Uh, you know, so, like, it doesn't look good any way you look at it in terms of like momentum uh, and just position wise so we looked at the moving average uh, trends it looks like it's below most of the averages <clears throat> I think uh, I changed them to all SMA so they're all just moving averages and then the average daily range uh, it it was getting close to like uh, the low uh, side but uh, by the end of the day it so it starts to reset the uh, ADR so come uh, market open you know it's it's a whole new range uh, so it's gonna start in the middle um, so it wasn't extended enough uh, as far as like RS uh, we'll get to RSI macro range uh, if we look at the chart for uh, let's see What's the one that's got the ranges? So I think it's the noise. If we go to the S&P 500, this is the one that's got like um, a two-year range and the 52-week range. So two-year range, uh, we have we have 13 days. Oh no, uh, yeah, two-year range. We have 13 days until the month closes, but it looks like we're coming into some support here, or um, this level around 0.246. So if we test the lows and we reclaim uh, here and we close above on the month, um, it will be really good. Um, I do have a target at 38.80. So we could, I don't know, we could come into it and bounce uh, and reclaim. That would be really interesting. Uh, I mean, like I was targeting that a while back, um, but... Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I won't uh, take profit too early um, at uh, the demand, weekly demand. Maybe I'll save two thirds for that market, uh, that pivot, H4 pivot, uh, the market imbalance, the, what I call a market imbalance, and then maybe another for 38.80, which is another target. And that's kind of like uh, right above this 0.32 line. So uh, based on the two-year range, though, we're under like a fake out zone, the 0.13, and uh, we have 13 days till that bar closes. But uh, we've hit this uh, the top of this um, channel on the 10 uh, one month, 10 period one month high uh, moving average channel, and it acted as resistance. And then on the day, we're closing bars below the low 10 period moving average channel which is acting as resistance at the 52 week range 0.382 which is a fake out zone so it's highly likely we're going to the 0.618 or the lows so we'll see how it plays out but you know with a weekly mac uh, macd cross 31016 i would expect a, a really big punch uh, to the downside enough to hit the lows it's kind of just how I see it with that. So uh, we went through um, a synopsis of what the trend is saying. We're under we're under most of the uh, moving averages, so it does look like we are heading, if not in a downtrend, again. And then uh, the average daily range that's inconclusive right now because we got to see just how Monday how we're doing in Monday. And then uh, macro range, uh, we are definitely um, hitting some fake out zones to push us to the downside. As far as RSI, um, most of like the um, 
time frames that are under H4 are oversold. Uh, the only thing that's not is the daily, uh, and I think that's around like 50. And uh, the low end would be 32, and the high end is 68. So it's like almost exactly in the middle. Uh, and the idea would be to wait until um, some kind of bear flag forms or um, until the daily RSI gets oversold. Uh, so it, it, in general, it says it suggests that there's a weak trend on the daily until it becomes oversold, which is below 32. So it's got some... It's got some time before it gets there. Trend efficiency, uh, I think on the daily, if we go back here, <clears throat> we're efficient to the downside on the daily. Um, it does look like it's um, fading a little bit, so we got to wait and see. But it does look like a time where like there's a lot of chop, and if you look at the daily, it did chop around. <laughs> um, anytime when we're in this monthly... Um, moving average channel, it's super choppy. Um, under the 10 period uh, high and uh, um, above the 10 period low, it's just super choppy. A lot of noise. Um, and as you can see, we got, we're got we in the gray with the uh, the monthly, um, what is it called, uh, trend efficiency. But um, we'll see if we pick up more uh, with more efficiency with the momentum that's like the question with the with the MACD crossing do we pick up more trend efficiency to the downside uh, that would show up on the trend efficiency score on the daily because it did look like it was kind of rounding and fading on that those green bars so we'll wait and see I'm already in a short position one break even another one trailing at the 15 minute uh, what is that uh, nine period four multiple and um, so it's it's like um, it's 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 really safe right now for um, being able to build a position to the downside and then as far as like a market structure break uh, we've already had an h4 market structure break to the downside um, and I think uh, a daily market structure break to the downside I think that's right and uh, so it does sound um, like feasible. It sounds feasible. And um, uh, until we have an H4 market structure break to the upside, I'm going to keep my shorts. <clears throat> so that's kind of how I'm playing it. And uh, I'm just going to let it let it run and um, see if I can get bag um, 1000 dollars or more on uh, this trade <laughs> so um best of luck on uh just everyone trying to interpret what's going on it looks like there's a lot of noise and i've just basically tried to describe all of it and then what i thought was like clear signal by just giving some kind of summary of both like the technical side and also just like from the um, fundamental side. I don't know. It's like it's it's what I would call fundamentals of like institutional bias, credit mark, uh, credit market, uh, risk on risk off, um, sentiment and math cycles and um, what's going on with government spending. And central bank balance sheet uh, so that um, that combined with the, the market uh, structure and technicals I, I thought would give like a lot more clarity of just uh, what the heck is going on <laughs> all right talk soon